When it comes to my video game past, it got started with the NES. The NES was the first system I ever had, so the Atari 2600 was something that I never experienced as a kid, and I actually didn't experience any Atari 2600 stuff until I was an adult. I picked up an Atari 7800 bundle off of eBay that came with a bunch of 7800 games and some 2600 games, and I actually did a video on that probably two or three years ago on the channel. I'll put a link in the cards up above if you're interested in seeing that, but I actually enjoy some Atari systems. I thought the 7800 was actually a pretty cool system. It definitely had some drawbacks in terms of sound and whatnot, but I thought it was a system with a lot of potential. I also really enjoyed the Atari Jaguar, which is another console that I've done a video on. But like I said, never played a 2600, never had a 2600. Well, Ryan from Castlemania, who's a good buddy of the channel, asked me if I wanted to check out the Retron 77, which is the latest system from Hyperkin. That is an Atari 2600 that you can play on modern televisions via HDMI out. And I said, sure. And as always, Ryan offers 10% off for all of my viewers with the coupon code RGTKers. So if you want to save some money, put in that coupon code. If you don't want to save some money, don't put in that coupon code. It doesn't really affect me. I don't get any sort of kickback. I will sleep the same way. But I was definitely interested in checking out the Retron 77 because why not? It looks like an interesting enough system. So today we're going to check out the Retron 77. We're going to unbox it, see what comes in the system, and I'm going to try out a few different games that I own for the Atari 2600 on the system and we'll check the compatibility of it. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's check out the Retron 77 and see if it's the ultimate Atari 2600. Hey, RGT85, hey Sean. Oh my God, it's Stevie Richards! All right, so here's the box for the Retron 77. It says it comes with uh, 720 output, 16 by nine or four by three, premium controller and a micro cable. But there's something interesting on the back. It says that it comes with a six foot micro cable with AC adapter. If AC adapter is not included, we strongly advise you use a five volt, one amp USB uh, wall AC adapter. So do some systems not come with an AC wall adapter? Is that for if you buy it used? If you buy it used, I highly doubt you'll have a box that comes with the system. So I don't know, that's kind of a weird thing to put on the back of the system, but you know, it's on there. So let's open this bad boy up. And here's the system itself. It actually has a decent weight to it. Um, I'm kind of surprised about that. Uh, I know this is basically just an emulated system, you know, something that you would get on the Raspberry Pi. I don't recall the name of the emulator they use. I want to say Stella, but I could be wrong with that. Uh, it has some fake wood on here, hashtag fake wood, so, you know, no big deal. Uh, on the front of the system, you have a save button, a load button, a reset, and a mode button. I know different games, you have to hit the mode button and things like that. There's a little switch here for different uh, games that you can use and get different modes in those games. Like I said, I'm pretty much an Atari 2600 noob so if you're looking for like the most in-depth 2600 information I'm definitely not the guy for it I'm just sort of a casual enthusiast when it comes to the Atari 2600 you have the skill buttons here nice click to them you have the two controller slots and on the back of the system you have a fry button a 4x3 and 16x9 adjuster you have the color or black and white adjuster a memory card slot so I'm assuming you could put ROMs on here as well uh, the micro SD uh, cable slot for the AC wall adapter and the output, the HDMI output. Uh, it's a pretty decently built system, honestly. It's got a good weight to it, like I said. The cartridge slot looks nice as well. So, not, not bad, you know, not bad. Ooh, it only comes with one controller. That kind of sucks. I guess it's not a huge deal, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just used to these systems coming with two controllers nowadays. Uh, the controller feels very, very light. And, oh my, Jesus, is it, ugh, ugh, is there something wrong with this controller? Like, it doesn't move. Look at this. I don't think it's supposed to be like that. I mean, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty stiff. I would think there would be a little more giveaway with that. Uh, two buttons on here as well. And, of course, some Hyperkin branding. More hashtag fake wood on here. A little scratched up. Uh, it looks like the sticker 
might be coming up on it. This is a new system, so, you know, that is worth noting, I guess. And here's the USB slot, or the controller slot. Yes, you can use 9-pin controllers, so like a Sega Genesis controller may potentially work on this system. I will try that out because I have some Genesis controllers lying around. You have the instruction booklet, and I am guessing accessories. So this is probably like the power and whatnot. HDMI cable, can never have too many of those. The power brick and the control or the uh, micro USB cable. So all in all, the system I feel is pretty good. This controller, though, I don't know. I would have liked a little more wiggle with this. Maybe that's the way it's supposed to be, so it's nice and tight and responsive. But I don't know. That feels a little too stiff for my liking. However, let's check out some games because that's all that really matters. See how it plays the games, and then I'll give you guys my final thoughts. All right, so first up, let's take a look at Pac-Man on the Atari 2600, considered by many to be the worst version of Pac-Man pretty much ever. And, uh, I mean, it seems to be working fine on the Retron. Um, I will say that it seems like cartridges can be a bit finicky on this. Um, like, you know, my cartridges are pretty clean. I cleaned them even more. And it still seems like sometimes the, um, the system just doesn't want to read the cartridge. Um... Yeah, we died. Um, this is this is definitely not a great version of Pac-Man. I will say the controller isn't as bad as I initially thought it was. I still would have preferred it to be a bit looser. Um, I feel like I would have had a bit more control over what was going on. Like right there, I feel like I should have dodged in there and I attempted to with the controller. A little bit looser would have been nicer, but you know, I guess different strokes for different folks. Some people might like the stiffness of this controller. And of course you can, you know, alternate controllers out as well but the system is a $70 system so I would have liked you know a, maybe a better controller just in my opinion but honestly I, you know this version of Pac-Man like sucks visually speaking but it's not terrible like it's, it's definitely playable so yeah here's Pac-Man um wow I shouldn't have died there let's check out another game and see what we got time for another classic with E.T. on the Atari 2600 I only have the best Atari 2600 games, folks. And once again, you can see the game itself looks fine. Uh, let's try to find these time pieces and whatnot to uh, advance throughout the game. Uh, that's that's great. Good job there. Um, I, you know, it, it's kind of tough for me because a lot of these games just are, are before my time. So it's hard for me to be, you know, really super interested in them. And I keep falling in this hole. Jesus, Lord, get me out of here. So, you know, it's a bit difficult. Uh, you probably noticed that I do not have any uh, volume going on right now. I don't know why. I don't know if it's my capture card or what, uh, but it's not picking up the game's audio for some reason. And it seems like, ooh, there's a piece. It seems like oh, when I hook it up to my TV, it's fine. So I'm going to equate it to the capture card because I haven't looked or I haven't heard of anyone else having any trouble. I am using my standard Elgato HD, um, which works for everything. It's what I capture all my footage with. So, you know, once again, I'm not quite sure what's going on with, with that. But like I said, it did. The audio is fine when I hook it up to my TV. I am using a, a monitor right now to record all this footage. But, you know, it's ET. It's playing on the system. I guess that's cool. So uh, let's check out another game. It is worth noting if you boot up the system without a game in it or the system doesn't want to read the game like it has been doing for a lot of my games, uh, there are some pre-installed ROMs on here that you can check out. A game called Baby, Moocher 77, Mucker 77, Astron 1, Tilde Sign 1, and Nexion 1. So let's check out one of these games. You can add up to 18 ROMs on the system. So if that is your forte, um, that's cool. I, I don't know what's going on with this game. What, what am I supposed to do? That, that's, that's the thing about a, a lot of Atari 2600 games. Uh, you don't really know what the hell you're doing. And that's maybe why I'm not that big of a fan of the system. Like, I, I literally have no idea. I'm pressing the button. Um, my guy lights up. Oh, maybe I'm supposed to, like, go through this maze that's on the bottom of the screen. Jesus! Jesus! Get away from me! I think that's what's going on. That's like a first-person perspective. But, like, put a little instructions in here. Like, let me know what's up. Let me know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, so this is this is a fun game. Um, I, I guess, you know, if you're, if you're into this kind of stuff, you might enjoy it. Um, but I'm going to try another cartridge out. So let's see what's that, what that's all about because, yeah, I, I'm not doing good in this game. 
And finally, let's take a look at Combat, which is a classic for the Atari 2600. I guess I am doing the two-player mode. I actually had to look up a PDF file over on Atari Age to figure out, you know, how to get this this game up and running. Um, and I think that's what a lot of people will have to do just because of how old these games are unless they're super familiar with them. So we're gonna, I'm obviously doing a two player thing and I don't have a second player to play with, but I did shoot him and that does make me happy. So I am winning and like that's, that's all that really matters. So let's make our way back over here. I could see this game actually being a lot of fun. Um, you guys know, like I said, I'm not super familiar with the system, but this seems like a game that I would actually enjoy, especially playing it with uh, someone else, you know? It seems like it would be a pretty fun and hectic experience. Uh, the tank could move a little bit faster, um, and this this controller is just killing my thumb. I, I'm not a fan of this controller. Um, but, you know, this is a pretty solid game, combat, and it's running nice. It looks nice in HD, but it's like, you know, these games are so simplistic. Uh, it's more of a convenience thing just being able to play on your HD television So I'm gonna mess around with this a little bit more off-camera and then give you guys my final thoughts on the Retron 77 So what are my final thoughts on the Retron 77? I don't really hate it, but I don't really love it either It definitely has a place in the market though I think just some of this stems from the fact that I'm just not into the Atari 2600 as a lot of other people are if you grew up with the system You're probably very familiar with what the 2600 does and how to work the system, but as someone who who's not that familiar with the system, I don't know. I would have liked to have seen, you know, the buttons for different modes and stuff, possibly on the controller itself, because having to get up and adjust it, while it is true to form as the original system was, is a bit of an inconvenience in my opinion. The system did have a tough time reading some of my cartridges, and I did clean them. I tried them out on my 7800 as well, and it seemed to work fine on there, but for whatever reason, my Retron 77 was just a bit picky, which is sort of common for a lot of clone systems, but I think my biggest problem with the Retron 77 is that it MSRPs for $70 and for $70 I feel it's a bit overpriced you guys know I review a lot of NES and SNES and Genesis clone systems and I always like to talk about the actual price of the system most of the ones that are like $60 and up do multiple systems and they feel like a quality product the controllers are nice the controllers work good and I just feel like this is a bit skimpy when it comes to things like that the addition of being able to add ROMs to the system is very nice as well I think that's a cool thing but I would have liked to have seen some more bells and whistles for $70 and honestly I do not like the controller that comes with the system as I played it more throughout the day I started to have a few issues with it I read online that a lot of people are having their controllers break with the system which I think is just a big inconvenience because really the controller is one of the most important things when it comes to a system being able to control the games is very important there's definitely some bright spots on here like I said being able to play your 2600 collection on your HD television via the cartridge on this system is pretty nice the emulation itself itself seems to work well enough with the Stella emulator. I did look that up to make sure that was the name of it. Go for me, good points for me. But all in all, it's not a system for me. It may be a system for you if you're a diehard 2600 fan, but if you're a more casual 2600 fan, I don't think it's worth the $70 investment. But I do want to thank Ryan from Castlemania for sending this out for me to check out. Like I said, if you are a diehard 2600 fan and you want to check out this system, make sure you get it from him so you can save 10% off by using the coupon code RGTCares, or don't because like I said, no kick back and thank you for watching this video let me know what you think of this console in the comment section down below and as always if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications and i will catch you guys on the next video later